Hey guys, welcome to this week's Sunday Spin, where we take the music that we're spinning this week. I'm Terry with Fry Squad Media, and I'm here with one of my very great friends, Vinny from Loud Luck Music. Vinny, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me, Terry. This is such a treat to get to uh, to talk with you on Sunday Spin. It's a show that I watch on a regular basis, so now to be able to come and talk to you and, and all of your viewers, it's it's a pleasure. Well, I'm so stoked you're here. Um, You have been very busy as of late. Uh, You kind of have some cool things going on. There's a new, I guess, project called Utter Disregard. Can we talk about it? Yeah, so um, if you've seen my face and I look familiar, it might be because uh, you know me from the band Loud Love. Uh, You know, Loud Love is kind of the the moniker that I make music with um, all over, you know, with all different types of music. Um, but since then, uh, I've started a band with a couple of really great friends of mine called Utter Disregard. Uh, some of you in, in the scene might know Mr. Jimmy Minarchik. Uh He's a, an amazing guy, an amazing friend. Uh, he and I decided to team up with uh, one of my great friends, Bill Minetti, who played drums in Loud Love, along with a mutual friend of ours named Pete Cunningham. And we're in this really awesome, really angry, but really poppy uh slash thrashy slash street punk band and it's it's been awesome that's amazing so you you guys pretty much just kind of do it all in style you know like that's yeah. kind of cool that you're loving the combo and stuff and kind of just willing to change are you guys kind of writing songs together or i know for a lot of loud love that was through you um yes. but uh is this time just more of a collaboration of the it is. We're all um, we're all putting our ideas in the hat. Uh, you know, Jimmy. It, it's a little weird because three quarters of the band are here in South Jersey, right outside of Philly, and Jimmy's out in Pennsylvania. So it's, it is a little harder to kind of get together in person. But we swap a lot of ideas digitally. Um, so you know, if if Jimmy writes something on the bass, he'll send it to me. I'll add my flavor to it. I'll send it to Billy, and it becomes this hodgepodge until it turns into a really awesome song that we're really proud of. And um, it's cool because we're all kind of in the same headspace right now, especially with Billy and I having gone through what we went through with Loud Love. There was a lot of uh, kind of anger and, and, and kind of a, a lot of pent up energy with the end of that band. And we're funneling it all directly into utter disregard. So, um, you know, we're writing songs that, like I said, there's uh, it's straight up street punk thrash punk, um, you know, all the way to, I mean, it it kind of dives into metal as well. So um, we're just, we're throwing everything we we have at this. Yeah. um, Musically, uh, I want to say you're very talented. Um, I've always been a fan of your work. I've seen you perform at camp last year and just the time and the style I I love. I think you're like the coolest when you're on stage because like you just have this air about you that is just you know exactly what you're doing when you're doing it you are so much fun on stage i just absolutely love to watch you play it's great Um, thank you i appreciate that and seriously coming to camp last year was you know what you and laura put together uh, with camp punksylvania i can't wait to be there this year um just that just to be able to watch and to help out wherever i can but um what you ladies do is is nothing short of amazing so i appreciate you oh my gosh Oh, right in the heart. <laughs> Feeling it right here. It's all about love. But yeah, um, you know, any, so are you guys writing an album? Is that what's going on? Is there maybe some plans in the works there? Yeah, yeah. So we were, um, it's funny, we were writing these songs and we were putting them together and they were kind of like demos for a little while just to kind of feel out the, the process. One of the things about myself is I've always been really kind of down on myself. And I really appreciate you saying that it looks like I know what I'm doing on stage. And I feel like that's where I'm most comfortable. Um, but when it comes to things like singing and, and my songwriting and recording and stuff, I've always been really kind of extra hard on myself. And for whatever reason, with this implosion of loud love, it really actually kind of bolstered my own self-confidence. And I said, you know what? Fuck all this. I'm 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 okay with me. I'm and I'm confident in myself. So I've actually started really diving into singing a lot. Um, you'll find that once these songs start uh, hitting people's ears, 
uh, there's going to be a pretty much a different vocal style with every single song that we're doing, which is really fun for me. Um, all, from guttural screams to kind of like a zany, almost like Fat Mike type style, uh, all the way to, you know, very soulful, very, you know, almost a uh, love or breakup song type thing going on. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, um, so we're writing these songs and we were originally going to wait until, you know, we were ready to go to a studio and record it. Um, but the other thing I decided to do, I was like, you know what, we're all poor and <laughs> we've all been doing this for a long time and technology is great. So why not let's just do it ourselves. And it's actually, you're catching me on a great day because it's the day after we, uh, we tracked some drums That's awesome. and, uh, I got to do playbacks today and I'm doing a little bit of editing today and it sounds so great. Like Billy did such a great job and, uh, Pete did an amazing job kind of coaching him through that process while I engineered it. So um, I can't wait. I can't wait for people to hear what we're cooking up. And I really think it's going to resonate with people. I can't wait either. Um, yeah, uh, definitely back to the no effects. Now you did release the cover of my favorite no effects song. Hey. Which is, it's my job to keep on crop elite. Um, <laughs> and I want to say you absolutely nailed it. Um, I remember when you put it out, I was singing right with you. Um, the top melody of course but yes um but i thought you absolutely nailed that cover i hope you know maybe fat mike listens to it someday because i think you really really hit it hit it right on the head i'm i'm a big no effects geek i don't care who knows it um we actually we still play that one live so if you ever catch us out um we've been opening our sets with that song um we also did um uh, dad's bad news off of oh, that's a great song too yeah off of um so long and thanks for all the shoes it's the best album <laughs> yeah i i love that record it's so oh, good okay. um it's not my sunday pick because it's probably like my monday through saturday pick um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah you know it's um it it's really cool to be able to kind of dive back into to my roots personally because with loud love I, I do so many different genres of music and and I work with so many different styles of, of musicians and stuff like that. And it's really great to do, but my heart and soul is in punk rock music. I mean, and I was trying to describe to Pete, he's actually, he's more from like kind of the metal hard rock world. And he's like, I've never been in a punk band. I'm kind of overwhelmed. I was like, dude, don't worry about it, man. Punk rock is all about family. It's all about, it's more of an idea or ideal than it is a sound, you know, like it's it's the heart and soul that you pour into whatever sound that you're making. And really, whether it's ska or whether it's street or pop, or it doesn't matter, there's dad punk now. Um, as long as the passion's behind it, that's really what it's all about. And, you know, I remember being 15, 16 years old, my first band, it's called First Step to Failure. And we just went up there and we just made as much noise as we could and and that was a good night for us so um it's it's fun to be able to do that again um <clears throat> uh, years later um i so, just got like yeah. chills just <laughs> you saying that it's so nice it's you know i feel that too right um yes kind of through this and, and camp oh. and that's why we're homies um <laughs> yeah but i i just love that so thank you so much um but yes we are here to find out what your Sunday spin pick is this week. So who are you spinning? My Sunday spin this week. And I have John Grove to thank from Coffee with Lions, who I said no effects was my Monday through Saturday spin. Um, it's actually Coffee with Lions. <laughs> I am so good, right? <laughs> They're so good. I can't wait to hear their new record that's coming out. Um, but enough about them. Uh, they can promote themselves. He was on <laughs> Uh, but no, but John told me about a band called Seeing Snakes, who I did not hear of. Um, and they're right from my backyard, from Philly slash Jersey area. Um, so I literally just started getting into them. Uh, they have an LP out. Uh, it's called For Who, For What. Uh, it was released in 2019. So it is a couple years old, but it's really fresh. And one thing that I uh, learned kind of diving into Seeing Snakes is that they know how to start a record. Um, that's one thing that they're super good at. Um, so whether it's this LP, they also have a couple of EPs out as well. Um, my favorite of the EPs in their discography is Jake Goes to Portland. Um, and it's uh, it's kind of cool. There's like a little 
parody of Milo from The Descendants on the cover. Oh, I love and it's that. kind of like that monochromatic, you know, layout there. And it's a few songs, and that was also put out in 2019. But they're very active. They're playing a ton of shows, um, and uh, they're actually going to be at the West York Inn with Coffee with Lions on the 22nd of July. And I'm pretty sure all of the other Disregard guys are going to be out there just to watch. You know, I can't wait to see that show. Um, but yeah, so if you're spinning Seeing Snakes, um, I would highly recommend the, the LP, kind of diving into that first. It kicks off with a song called Modelo, uh, and it, it it hits you right in the in the gonads or in the ovaries or whatever you got. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like I said, they, they know how to start off a record, and the, the energy just keeps going. So there's 12 songs on this LP, and it really doesn't, doesn't uh, slow down too much, you know? Uh, and where it does, it, it, it slows down for a reason and it slows down really well too. And it's got a lot of groove and a lot of energy. Um, one thing I recommend all bands, please go on your band camp, put your lyrics, because I love to learn them. Um, oh. I'm still kind of learning their lyrics. So uh, I haven't, uh, you know, kind of dived into their, you know, the song meanings just yet. But if you're looking for some kick ass energy, you're looking for a, a record to walk to or to jog to or go to the gym, this is the one to do it. Um, you know definitely check out seeing snakes and check them out live too all right well that's awesome um i am definitely gonna check them out um but this week my pick is chris Hanna from propaganda he comes out with uh his i guess moniker jesus h chris and he released just earlier this week called a catastrophe break with consensus reality which was a nine uh song I guess album 34 minutes long of covers um some of these were previous uh propaganda uh songs there's snfu there's iron maiden there's razor there's sacrifice um i cannot put this album i just really picked it up i want to say about three four days ago and it's been non-stop uh i play it all time i absolutely he did such a great job with it i'm going to talk about two songs though because i find these two were really the ones that stood out the most for me. Um, we're going to start with Coach's Corner. And this one seems to be the one that has broken the internet somehow. Um, a lot of my friends have reached out and wanted to know how I felt about it. Because it is such a different style from the original Coach's Corner, which is obviously a more punk rock, harder song. This just slows it right down. I want to say almost to like a alt country, maybe post hardcore. Very slow. I actually like wound up playing it. And listening to it when I was playing like Red Dead, and okay. I thought it was perfect for it. It sounds uh, like it fits the the you know the aura of that very well from your yeah story. yeah um you know it's kind of that Canadian and being Canadian myself you kind of grew up with that style of music um for a lot of things it just it really just but the parts that I love the most about this song is uh, Chris Hanna's vocals holy fuck like with you know, with the original, it's definitely an angrier song, but this one just really opens him up to a whole new different style. And I think he absolutely nails it. I do not hate it. There's a little part in that last minute piece where I'm just like, eh, maybe it's a bit of a drumming side, but then he finishes back off really strong with it. And I thought it was great. Um, yeah, but I don't, people are kind of torn about it. I think we're just so used to the original that we're not giving this one the credit and the love it deserves because it is truly fucking fantastic. I can't put it down. I don't, I love it. So I'm going to listen to it. No, I absolutely can't wait to check it out. Just when talking off air and then now hearing your description now, I'm, that's literally the first thing I'm going to listen to as soon as. Yeah, you have to. It is, you will find yourself like I was belting, like just right from the belly singing this one. Um, the next one is my favorite SNFE song, Wreck in Progress. I, Wow. Um, this song was truly fantastic. It came from uh, In the Meantime and In Between Time, which is released back in 20, 2004. Um, I want to say, but I can't find anything on it. So this is just me talking here. Um, that Mark Belt was actually maybe a part of this recording um, of the song. And the reason why I'm saying this is because the the big part of why I love In Me Time, In Between Time is the vocal melodies. Um, 
This sounded S and F you. Uh, he did not change the song very much. It does sound like Chris Hanna, which is not a bad thing. And if for whatever reason S and F you decides one day that they just kind of want to take out and do a tribute to, you know, Mr. Taipei, I think Chris Hanna would be the best frontman to do it with. Um, I can't put this song down at all. Uh, I just love it. They did such a fantastic. It really stuck to us and F you. Uh, that core that energy that love that just everything just really fit well so well without it um it really peaked my ears because i wasn't kind of i just kind of had the album like um playing in the background while i was working and wreck in progress came and then i heard that like the chorus come through and that the or the melody in the vocal or in the chorus and i was like wow level it was it stopped me in my tracks and i'm like whoa what am i listening to so i <laughs> truly love it i do recommend even the iron maiden song the sacrifice song is just absolutely killer you guys do need to check this out i promise you will not be disappointed and with that it brings us to our shout out portion um benny who are you shouting out this week i've got a shout out these dudes that i've known for such a long time uh they are a band called jersey calling and they're from, you guessed it, they're from Wyoming. What? No, I'm just kidding. They're from, <laughs> they're from New Jersey. Um, no, they're, um, I've been I've been friends with these guys uh, for such a long time, but I've also just been like uh, a big fanboy. When we used to play together when we were 16, 17 years old, uh, I would stand out in the crowd and just be in awe of their showmanship and the way that they wrote tight and concise and beautiful songs with amazing lyrics. Um, they took a really long time off and they just recently over the last couple years got back together. They're all, you know, dads and married and uh, engaged now, depending on which one of them that you're talking <laughs> to. Um, but they, they put out a record and it's called Punk Rock Retirement. And just being a Jersey Calling fanboy, I, I thought it was kind of like their swan song. You know, they were going to kind of come out, do one last hurrah. Um, and, and I was happy with it because it's so good. Um, but I was relieved to know and excited to know that they're actually back in the studio recording as we speak. Awesome. And, you know, like I said, I'm a huge fanboy, so I'm like sitting here geeking out over these songs. <laughs> I can't wait to hear them. But it's funny because Josh, the lead singer, works with my wife. And, you know, like I, I you know, I talked to, to Randy, the bass player, on a regular basis. He actually featured on the art, you know, the Soul Loud Love album that we had put out. He played bass for us on a song. Um, I've done work with uh, with Sean in the past. He's played harmonica on a Tom Petty cover that I did a while back. So um, definitely shouting out Jersey Calling. Check them out. There, so you will not be disappointed. That's awesome. Um, so music video for today is coming from a band that I truly adore, which is Next Scars. Uh, songs called Loaded. Uh, you can catch these guys July sixth. They're going to be playing with H two O at the Crossroads Guardwood in New Jersey. So make sure you go check them out. Vinny, thank you so much for joining me again this week. I am so happy to have you here. Terry, I am happy to be here. And for those of you who may not know, it might be an industry secret. I'm gonna let it out. Cool. Terry has the best hug in the business. It's right here. Best. These and tiny arms, they're tiny, but they hug. They hug so well. So and good. I can't wait for yeah. camp. And maybe sometime in between and, and get hugs. Air hug. yes air hugs over canadian borders i know right um hopefully we'll see you when i am down in scran this july but um yes. i'm very excited to see you again if not in september and if you guys do want tickets to camp Pennsylvania, we have them on sale single sale will be coming oh shoot single sale or sorry our lineups are out yes so yeah um, if there's a day you want them, you make sure you get it. And you can buy them at www.camppennsylvania.com. And with that, we will see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.
and that's yeah, it. Exactly. Will, you doing the slip and slide? Ready? He's doing it. Ha <laughs> 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 <laughs>